Right, let's get going. So, Coach Helen for UFIT Studio. Now, uh, I talked yesterday about one of my stars questions, which I can't remember what it was now. Oh, uh, well, like, how long is it going to take me to lose weight? And um, this is another one that's uh, closely, closely linked up or in the um, in a very early part of the journey. And I love this question. Helen, I have a question. But all goo, all is. Let me cup all exterior noise to listen to your question. What should I eat? Now, <laughs> I love this question. I love this question on different levels. I love this question. Um, even it's, it's like, I think it's a, a bingo. It's one of the bingo things that a client will ask at some point, what should I eat? Um, I love I love this question. And I wish that Kate was here so we could shoot on the stand. So Kate's here, there she is. Yay, Kate, she's here. Missed you, Kate, just saw you arrived. Uh, what should I eat? Now, the word should already tells me, uh, it indicates that somebody's already telling them off for something in their head about food, because we've talked about shoulda, shoulda, coulda, woulda. So if somebody's talking about should, we're talking about should, they've already started to create within their head, if not already, usually already if they've come into us, a list of good and bad foods. Right? I know this from psychology, from food psychology work with this many clients. I know if someone asks me a question in this language, what should I eat? That means that somewhere they already started the telling themselves off for eating bad food. Do the bunny is the bad food. Bad food, bunny is. Um, and they think there is a list of good food, halo, uh, that they are meant to be eating. That is a reason why they've not lost weight prior to, to joining UFIT. Uh, so let me repeat that. The question, what should I eat? Right, comes from a belief somewhere there is a good list and a bad list of food, a bit like Santa. Uh, the, the good food will help you get a present of weight loss, and the bad food will get you a lump of coal shaped like cake, and you will not lose weight. That is somewhere the underlying belief system that's coming into play um, when it comes to those clients. And often, right, and uh, even when speaking to clients over the last seven days, new clients, I've had like three in the last uh, week, new clients, right. All of them have had some perception about the good and the bad when it comes to food and asking questions about what they should eat. Um, so the questions around the bad food, okay, what they should not eat, uh, is usually very uh, similar as in uh, what colour rice is best, is better. Uh, should I stop eating white potatoes? Dust is also good, Kate, okay, yes. Um, do I have to stop eating cheese entirely? Uh, <laughs> Can I eat pasta? All bread. I love bread. Well, I actually do love bread. <laughs> it's a statement. Oh, I love the bread questions as well. Uh, often I'll get, um, I know toast is bad. As if toast is mugged people in the middle of the night. Um, or I know I have white toast. I know that's, oh, he's, at, he's just sidebar. He's had the whole ice cube. Good work, mate. Do you want another one? <laughs> just give him another Bear with, just give my cat an ice cube. Here you go, mate. Um, Come to my house, so just feed, feed your ice cubes, whoever you are, whatever animal. Uh, is it white bread or brown bread? What's better? Um, I shouldn't be eating any bread, I know. I know toast is bad. Um, there are lots of the questions that come out because, again, that also tells me that the, that the person I'm speaking to, when they ask me the question, what, what food should I eat? Um, they're listing um, good and bad and they're not seeing, get this, not, not seeing the spectrum of food. Okay, so we repeat that statement. They're not seeing the spectrum of food. Now, I th 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 there's there's part of me that I, that I I do completely understand where somebody's coming from when they're asking these questions. By the way, hey Snaya, woo, ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah. I do understand when clients are asking these questions because their nutrition it seems that they've been taught somewhere by a previous experience with food or dieting that things like uh, brown rice is the best thing on earth. Only eat sweet potatoes because they're a superfood. Um, oh, have an avocado a day. Every meal if you can, because that's good for you. Uh, oh, I didn't do three, I forgot to count. Um, what else? Uh, oh, don't eat any... Oh, eat loads of nuts because they're really good for you, because they're good. Um, and don't eat any cake that's bad. Bad and bread is bad. Bad is bad for digestion. Uh, it's made of plastics and stuff and all this, and yeah, it's bad for you. Um, 
and that's taught them over time that there is only extremes. There's a good thing, there's a bad thing, and actually there's a lot of confusion between uh, what actually, if they're looking at the plate, what are they hoping to see in terms of when they're looking at the plate that's going to lead them into healthier choices or towards the goal they want in terms of health and fitness and ultimately for some uh, losing weight, right? Uh, so it is the spectrum mentality. Now, I do also know, by the way, that people understand the spectrum. Again, though, an example of this, like I've just said, is that they only see the extremes. And by that, I mean, <laughs> most people, I would say, a majority of people who are meat eaters would see chicken, rice and broccoli as the, the end of one like spectrum there. They see that's one end of the spectrum. And pizza is the other end. Right, there's the spectrum. There is, however, I'm not discounting vegetarians. You can do tof tofu, broccoli and rice if you want. Right, just, just there for my people. Right, so they're the two extremes. However, this gap in the middle is just completely, there's nothing there in people's heads as in, I, I don't understand what is in the middle. And that is, I think, what when people are asking the question, that's perhaps what they're not really understanding. It's not that they do understand the shoulds, so they do know that that's the extreme. They just don't want to eat that every single meal. They don't know what's in the middle because they haven't experienced it or they don't have somebody to talk them through what the options are and help them decide for the spectrum. Now, one of the things I do say and I do start with, and sometimes clients need a recap on this, by the way, but I learned this as well. This is the thing, as a client it's, it's, or as a coach, uh, to assume that a client remembers all this from the get-go is, uh, is sometimes, maybe we just need a recap. Um, it's always best to understand, to start with, what some of the basic foundations are when you're looking at how do I start to build up my nutrition? What is that space in the middle? What does it look like? Some of the foundations are from a very basic level. Um, and this isn't teaching someone to, to suck eggs. It's actually helping to understand what is a carb, what is a fat and what is a protein, right? What are those elements? Where do they sit? Like if you're looking at egg white and egg yolk, for example, how it, how is that? like fitting into his characteries, characters, <laughs> categories, that too. The heat is, is taking more moisture from my mouth so I can't speak. Pair with. Mmm, hydrated. Um, things like sweet corn, the stuff that catches people out. Um, understanding like, okay, uh, right, fruit, fruits are carbs or the fruit bad because I've heard, I had it this week. I don't eat, I haven't eaten fruit for ages because uh, I was told fruit was bad, too much fruit is bad for you. Um, so just a fundamental understanding of what actually sits, sits in what categories and um, where are they in comparison to what you're having now. So if you make a list of all the, the things you're having in each category now, what are the other options you can exchange it with? Um, and that's always a great example to do. And this is something I do with clients all the time. I do it with new clients and also do it with some existing clients as well. So actually I'll say to them, okay, Let's have a look at your actual food now. Let's actually, let's have a look at the spectrum. So we're gonna list everything you eat now in all those categories, right? So all the carbs you eat, all the proteins you eat, and all the, the fats you eat. All right, let's list it all. Now let's take each element, and how could you lift that up the spectrum? And let's discuss what the spectrum looks like. I'm not gonna go through it all today, because we'd be here a while. But let's take um, one that always catches a lot of people out, it's uh, meat on or off the bone, right? So if I'm going through the spectrum with a client and say, right, okay, so chicken breast is the leanest meat, and then we go down the spectrum and we go into, let's say, uh, chicken uh, quarter, chicken thigh, chicken leg, and then chicken wings as being the higher calorie content of all of those. What of those do you have right now? And they might say, oh, do you know what? I, I cook with chicken thighs all the time. I love the taste. Yeah, they go really well in curries, really dissolve down. I'm like, yes, right? And just give them a bit of nutrition explanation around it. I say, right. If we want to lift that up the scale, where would you go? Like, right, okay, from what you've explained, I want to be leaning more towards breast meat, sometimes, not all the time, away from chicken thighs. It's like, yes, you don't, again, it's going up the spectrum in small movements. You don't have to ensure that you have chicken breast then with every single meal. You're then just favouring breast meat over thigh meat, for example, uh, a majority of time. And then take that, that as an example, and actually what you can do is go through every single element, and I have done this, right, with a client, a couple of clients actually, and start to look at ways of moving that up the spectrum. So again, we're not trying to get from the, the good, the tofu, chicken, rice and broccoli, and away from pizza immediately, right? 
what we're trying to do is find if you we're somewhere here just what is the middle section where it's coming up a little bit in each of those choices um and actually it's really interesting to see that that how small changes can make a big deal so for example even on a, a scale of uh sugary or or salty fatty foods if someone is having uh walkers crisps all day long because they love crisps all right crisps just Mm, they just have, yeah, they'll say it. I have to have it. I know I shouldn't. I do though. Okay, so let's take that principle. Let's look at the scale and find out where we can move that up the scale to change what you're eating right now and put it further on the spectrum to where you want to get to, more towards where you want to support your goals. And that you can do with every single element of a meal or e even your existing diet. Because what, what you can do as well, I mean, I, again, I've done this. I've even done this with an online shop with a client. I've had the run shine online shopping open on the desk. And unless we're actually doing the shopping at the same time, say, right, okay. So we're going to add this in this week. What are we going to change? Right, we're going to change that. Let's take that out of the basket. You've already got that in. Let, what can we change that for? And literally done that through the whole of someone's shopping basket to understand how they can change their nutrition towards where they want to get to on the scale. Um, and following on for that, right, this is... I love this exercise, right? This is also one of my favourites. Um, I say it a lot and some clients will recognise this when they hear me say it. Um, I will say it with every single client that I meet. And I love it as a saying because it's never so true. Uh, the, the reference, the, 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 the instruction I love to give is to eat the rainbow. I love it because it instantly helps a client visualise something in their head because Firstly, I can say to them, right, close your eyes and visualise your plate right now. Visualise dinner last night. What was on your, what, if you think of your plate last night, if you close your eyes, remember on the side of the kitchen counter before you took it to the table or to the sofa, whatever, or just picture it in your head as you sat down. What did you, what was the overwhelming colour that you got? Now, majority of clients will actually say to me, beiges and browns, because that's probably where they're, they're, they're their choices around food are at that time on the spectrum. They're very beige, very brown, um, maybe a little bit of colour. All right, right, okay, so your your goal is to increase the colour on your plate. All right, your goal is to make that plate look like the rainbow. You want to be eating the rainbow, okay? Because when, again, I say, what should I eat, Helen? I'm like, okay, let's talk about what we're eating right now and let's see how we can improve it again up the scale. If you're looking at... Um, you can do, I've done the same thing again, right, but maybe a little bit on a lower scale. So, right, let's write down all the vegetables you have right now. And then let's think of all the vegetables you've heard of that you might want to try. And I list them all out and I say, right, now, of all the, the vegetables you want to try, what we're going to do is we're going to add one in next week. Just one. You just pick one and add it in. And then we'll go again. We'll pick one and we'll add it in the week after or the week after that, right? And keep adding in until eventually... When they close their eyes, they say, right now, tell me what you can see. Or ask them to show me, right? Show me. Send me some pictures, right? I can see then that they're eating the colour. They're eating the rainbow on their plate. And, and again, like, I can probably do live all about vegetables on our own, how beneficial they are. Calorifically low, fibrously high, nutrition high as well. Uh, all fantastic things that we can get from, from vegetables that, um, for the majority of us, when we say, what should I eat? I think most of us, again... No, no, just don't want to eat broccoli with every single meal, right? And it's again, it's not just broccoli. There's all those vegetables in between, right? And actually, as and I've got this actually as a uh, as an infogram. I keep this on. It's actually in my inbox in a minute. Um, there's usually some cornerstones, right, of vegetables. I'm doing this. It's four, right? So you've got your reds, your oranges, uh, your greens, and your purples. Okay. And this is the thing, we often only see vegetables as even, well, generally green, right? And yet, okay, yeah, you've got your greens, you've got asparagus, kale, celery, sprouts, right? Uh, cabbages, all that lot. Um, and then you've got your reds, you've got your pep red peppers, you've got tomatoes, you've got radishes. Uh, you've got uh, oranges, you've got carrots, butternut squash, um, orange peppers, right? Um, and then purples, like you can get aubergine, you can get purple cabbage, uh, I've seen purple cauliflower. I quite like purple cauliflower. And you can get purple broccoli as well. I've seen that as well. It's weird when you cook it because it just goes everywhere. Um, so there's lots of variations, again, away from 
from you know a slice of mushroom on a pizza and some broccoli in a, in a Tupperware box and actually so often we're very kind of enclosed around I know what the ideal is there's all this stuff in the spectrum in the middle that really we're looking to support a client understand and that's why um I had it today right I had it today from a client new client today and I said what what brought you to you fit and one of the things she said was uh, because you you look at us, you, what I get from the impression is, is you treat people as individuals, and that's the thing. As for for advice on looking at dealing and and looking at food differently, it's bespoke to the person because what someone sees in that spectrum in between is very unique and is based on again the good or the bad list is usually taught or self learned or taught to them um, or is socially or culturally taught. And that's unique from person to person. And so how you approach it, this is one means of doing it. Now, this isn't the only means. Of, I have many tools in my toolbox. So like, this is one. This is a great one. It's a great exercise. It's a fantastic exercise, actually. This is not the only one. There's loads more, though, and that's trade secrets. I can't, I can't give them all away, right? I'll give plenty away as it is on here. Um, the, the thing is, though, is that this is just one way of flexing it to a person to understand where they are right now, what they believe is good or bad, and helping them support them to understand that it's, it's improvement along the spectrum rather than 100%, right? Because, it again, it all ties in, right? What happens if someone tries to eat chicken, rice and broccoli three times a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks of the year? I mean... Wowzers. Firstly, they're trying to get there like the hair as fast as possible, right? And secondly, they're trying to get there with no friends at the end of it or no sanity. Or if they even get there, because you'd have to take a pit stop from that one, like the hair, wouldn't you? You need to have a snooze and a, and a thought process about what I'm doing. And it, so it still ties in with everything I've talked about this week about, about slow progress and about slow weight loss. It's also about slowly learning how to, to change your, your nutrition or how you eat. How you eat what you should eat, how you eat, slowly, and by making small incremental changes that help you cross the finish, the non-finish line, as you say, as a tortoise. So it all ties in with itself, right? All of this has a, a running theme, and I've always said this, that um, a lot of this ties in with each other, which is why when someone asks what I should eat, I'm like, I am ready, yes. I love it. I love this question. I have to say, I can tell that I love it when someone asks me what I should eat because I'm like, right, we're ready to go. I can, I can work this person because I can start to really understand where they're coming from and it helps support them to move them to a different place. So there you go. The answer to what I should eat. <laughs> it was like this. Where's the recipes, Helen? I was expecting. Well, there you go. Chicken, rice and broccoli. Get there quick. Have no friends. No fun. Eat no cake. And probably load of dust cake, right? Kate, Kate's, Kate's a cleaner. You can, you can just scoop that dust and bring it home with you as your meal, Kate, if you want to get there quickly. I know, my friend, it's just a spectrum thing, as we know, and certainly for you as well, as with most people. So, whew, recap, faux show. That's right. I think he's overdosed on, on ice cubes down here. He's having a bit of a lay down. Right. What should I eat, Helen? Coach Helen, tell me, what should I eat? I love the question because I said it's one of the biggest questions I always get asked every single time, most of the time, about 9% of the time. Um, and what I said is the language is really interesting because should, uh, as we know, I've talked about this on a previous live, tells me the client already has a list of good or bad foods in their head. Um, and also um, they tend to see food as good or bad and that there is a good list and a bad list, a bit like Santa's list. And one, went, one, one list will get them what they want and the other one will take them further away in their heads or makes them a bad person even sometimes. Um, the questions I see, I cover them like what rice is good or bad, what potatoes are good or bad, um, cheese and bread of the devil, I know they are, I know I shouldn't eat them, uh, all those kind of things in the lam language um, tells me that they're not seeing the spectrum. So they're not seeing where they can make uh, they're not seeing the land in between, that, that land in between the good and the bad, right? That there's an extreme way of looking at food um, and it's often epitomised by the Tupperware friends and someone who traps pizza, right? That there's nothing in between and yet if you're kind of ours, 
uh, and hopefully if you're not um, and listen watch to this this helps you understand there's a big thing in the middle that me and the other co coaches are there to support you find um it's always great to understand the fundamentals right so you understand what your carbs fats and proteins discuss that with your coach and then have a look at what you're listing have a look at what you're eating right now and see the ways in which you can change that up the spectrum without going to the extreme where you can make small changes um see where it can be different on the spectrum right see where you can make changes in all the little things rather again than going the extreme uh and again i love this is a, this is a statement eat the rainbow it's like touch the rain skittles touch the rainbow eat the rainbow that's me eat the rainbow just not skittles in moderation i suppose however <laughs> eat the rainbow love it because uh, it really helps the client understand where they can make changes to what they're already eating in terms of uh, nutrition and, and uh, uh, vitamins, minerals, micronutrients, all that lovely stuff, right? It's all there. Uh, it's just helping the client see they can change that through looking at reds, oranges, greens and powerfuls, right? Love all that stuff. Yay, veggies, right? So again, the answer to the question, what should I eat? Actually, it's about how you're eating. So it's about making small changes Again, not trying to speed through it to the extreme and just taking the small steps and small changes that will ultimately, as you continue to do so, take you to your ultimate goal, which is what you're looking for. Yay. And Heather wasn't even here for some recipes. I was, uh, I was hoping she might. Um, now, whew, tomorrow, why track your weight? Now, last week I talked about ways of, of seeing progress without tracking your weight. And tomorrow I'm going to see why, you, why it's important to track your weight. Uh, and what issues come up with that so you've got, got a nice few points for everyone that so join me for that one if you haven't melted overnight good luck with your fan system window system whatever system you have to keep cool uh do not nip around i've got plenty of ice cubes if you're looking for some uh, and in the meantime i will i will thumbs up okay catch you tomorrow